Glad to have you along with us tonight. We've got a brand new topic, something we should have done years and years ago. Tonight, yeah. we're meeting our sheriffs. That's right, right, we are so happy to have Sheriff Mike Ezel from Jackson County on set with us, and Sheriff Keith Havard will be joining us on the phone in just a little bit. We're going to be talking about all the things that go into a sheriff's department. We're going to be talking a lot about scams, and stuff, the stuff that they, they have to deal with on those legal sides and trying to help residents out. Plus, of course, all of your phone calls here tonight. A little bit We've been talking about doing this show for years. I'm just so glad yeah. we got it in here for this season. It's really an honor. Uh, you know, Sheriff Ezel is just one of the finest people in Jackson County. So happy to have him on the show. He's been in law enforcement for just a number of years. I've known him for most of my professional career. A great fellow and just an honor to have him on the show. And thank you for giving us your Saturday night. Thank you very much. Sheriff, appreciate really appreciate it. Yeah, thank it. You, sir. Uh, you, uh, you've been sure. in the job now a couple mm -hmm. years now mm -hmm. in Jackson County. Mm -hmm. What would be, we were kind of talking before the show began, what are we some of the biggest things that, you know, when you were campaigning yeah. and then got into office and now mm -hmm. you sit here, what are some things that you've learned that you did, just didn't know yeah. uh, all those years ago? Well, I tell you, uh, being a sheriff is so much different from being a, a city police officer. There's so many other things that are involved in being a sheriff, uh, process serving, dealing with the big county jail dealing with all the municipalities oh, sure. and just dealing with a lot of folks. Would, would, I think most people would be surprised to know how big the sheriff's office oh, yeah. is. You know, mm -hmm. you see them on, like, usually on a small basis. You see them when you're out in the county you're riding mm -hmm. around, things like that. But there are over 200 employees of the sheriff's yeah. office because they right. do just a lot more than patrol. Oh, they sure. do so much administrative sure. things, process, oh. you know, security, the jail. Mm -hmm. It's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a huge organization, and he's just doing a fabulous job. Well, thing well, thank about you, it is sure. that, you know, with the new jail that we have at uh, Jackson County, which oh, has been in the making, for all those years, Long you know, time coming. It, it has really, uh, you know, it's a first class facility. They Absolutely. say, you know, if you go to jail, that's where you want to go. And, uh, you know, we <laughs> you have, say uh, that. We, they do. You <laughs> yeah. know, we've, we've been called and, and yeah. we've even had that uh, sent to us by message there a time or two. But, uh, you know, running that jail, as you know, you got a, a big kitchen there, you got to feed all those folks. Right. We house prisoners from, you know, from all around. Right. All the municipalities, we're, reached, we're going into an MOU with Ocean Springs right that's here right. coming up soon. And so it's a big responsibility. There's about 85 personnel that work out at the jail, plus the administrative part of it. There's a lot to Michelle, run Thank you jail. so much for your patience. What can we help you with tonight? Thanks, Michelle. Uh, yes, sir. What I wanted to find out is the distract drivers along the Gulf Coast that seem to still be doing texting, and a lot of them tailgate. Do y'all, does the, the, the police department really take care of this, or... Is this just a law that they passed and not really tend to it? Yeah. Or, uh, I got know? you, Michelle. Kind of wanted, did they just pass it to pass it? Mm -hmm. and Matthew, you have some thoughts yeah, on that? Yeah, I'm happy to kind of talk about that, Michelle. I can tell you, you know, they enfor certainly enforce it in Ocean Springs. Uh, we see a lot of uh, texting cases. It usually comes under the careless driving uh, as well as tailgating. And another interesting thing they passed not too long ago now, although time does, is the move over law, which mm -hmm. a lot of people don't I'd know I'd heard about. about that, yeah. And that is when law enforcement or first responders are on the side of the road, you're required by law to move over to the farthest lane that you can safely. And if you don't do so, uh, you can get a ticket. But I can tell you, absolutely positively in Ocean Springs and I know I talked to a lot of municipal judges as well that they do they are enforcing uh, the texting law and as well as um, the tailgating so it is being enforced as far as I know it is sheriff yes. what are your yes. thoughts yeah I tell you I'm a, a for it you know I tell you I, I was looking at some of the numbers we've had over uh, 350 accidents since January 1st hmm. and quite a few of those are for inattention uh, failure to yield to right away just not yeah, and also following too closely and a lot of that had been attributed to the telephone and uh, not paying attention to what they're doing so yes sure. sir it, it's it's a problem yeah. and uh, it's not always easily enforceable but uh, you know you can we have been issuing citations for yeah them. sheriff how do you go about that when you're deputies because you know they're watching the roads for mm -hmm. everything yeah. is it just one of the things where you literally just instruct your guys to look yeah. look for somebody on the phone you would have to look for somebody doing it while they're driving of course you know that could distract you from driving as well so right yeah. like i say it's not something that you can easily just go out and do right it usually ends up as a result of an accident or I you see. see them running off the road not paying attention so you can you can see it up ahead of them while you're patrolling Matthew, more thoughts? I do. Uh, where, wow. I, where I'm seeing it is uh, mainly a lot with stationary radar. So oh, the police okay. obviously aren't okay. driving because that's a lot to kind of take in. Mm -hmm. So the police are stopped. They're in a point where they're just doing radar patrol. So they're either in their car stopped or actually outside of their car running okay. with a handheld radar. And from that vantage point, they can kind of see into the vehicle. So we're, we're seeing it a lot more from that perspective. Can we help you? Hey, Kyle. 
Good evening. Um, so I had have, I have recently got a DUI in Pasco Shan. Um, I was just coming home from Gulfport, and the police officer pulled me over. I was showing my friend some of the houses along Scenic Drive, and uh, the, the police officer pulled me over. I was going maybe 24, 25 on a 25. And so he pulls me over, and he asked if I had anything to drink, and I told him I said I had had one beer, and uh, so he took me out the car. He gave he he made me do the test and everything else, but he did not recite any of my uh, my rights to refuse or to accept or anything. Okay, and I'm just wondering if I can get that thrown out in court. On the Kyle, let me say this. I know the guys are going to give you a good, honest answer here. I don't know if we have the right attorneys for that answer on tonight's oh, show. I, answer that, Kyle. I, I know. Let me just say, Kyle, I just yeah. oh, cards on the table here. You probably want to call when we have one of our DUI attorneys on for that show. You can call, but you want to, Kyle. Yeah. I know the answer. I, I, I'm going to start with yeah. Matthew uh, with that little disclaimer on All there. All right, Kyle. What you're talking about is the Miranda warnings. Uh, short answer is they're not required. A couple interesting things about that, and you know, we see the. A lot, a lot of that on television and things like that. So sure, you hear a lot sure. about that. A couple things. One, um, it, it's only if they seek to use the statements that you make uh, against you in later in a court of law. Mm -hmm. So if, quite frankly, if you say something uh, that they say, if Kyle, if you told the officer, well, I had 47 beers and 10 Jack Daniels, something like that, right, and they right. didn't Mirandize you at the time, you know, you could possibly argue to keep that out. But typically for a DUI, it's more on their observations, quite frankly, of you. You know, you talked about the, the, the tests they give you. Those are called field sobriety tests. And so they observe you. They have this walk and turn thing, the touching the nose. They have something called the horizontal gaze and the stagnus. So those are tests that they look at to kind of evaluate your level of impairment. So rarely does a DUI, you know, case turn upon what you tell them. Um, you know, I'm a big believer that when police ask you a question, you have to answer truthfully, correctly at all times, just as part of officer safety, overall safety for everybody. And so, you know, definitely, you know, when police ask you things, always be truthful. It goes better for you, in my opinion, in the end. But just because you were not Mirandized uh, doesn't mean they'll throw out the ticket. It just only means that perhaps uh, statements that you have made to the officer can't be used against you in a subsequent trial to find you guilty of the DUI. Okay. Um, but I can tell you just in my, oh, I know, just in my court, I wouldn't convict anyone merely on their statements because I think I want people to tell the truth. I don't want them to be penalized for, you know, for being truthful to the officer. And so, you know, that could be part of the evidence, but that wouldn't be evidence alone. I'd want to know what the officer saw, what they, you know, their observations, things like that. Also, I wouldn't want to penalize someone for being truthful to an officer because okay. I think we all should be honest to an officer. Anyway, sure. That's my your thoughts? There's a little little bit of room to play with here. Where, where would you like to I land concur. on this? <laughs> we talked about beforehand scams. Scams. It yep. seems like you mm -hmm. and all the local sheriff's department, George County mm -hmm. Sheriff's Department, dealing with local scams right. all the time. Right. Uh, what's what's making the rounds what? right now? What are you seeing trends yeah. in that? Well, the, the biggest scam we got going right now is the people calling saying they're from the IRS. Oh yeah. And they're telling you that. Uh, you have a, a fine that you haven't paid on, or, or either, you know, we get the fine and you're from the sheriff's office or the IRS that you owe money, and then they want you to go buy a, um, a prepaid card, and they'll send you to Walmart or either to the various, uh, you know, stores around town where you can buy this, uh, you know, card, and then you want to load it up with X amount of dollars on it, and uh, they'll always work a deal with you too if you'll load that thing up. It's just amazing that the amount of people, these, these calls, they just generate coming on. Wow. We, we put out many, many um, uh, you news know, releases, news, every, you, know, you name it, and, but they keep going, you know, and, and uh, it, at least once a month, my mother calls me to tell me that <laughs> somebody's called the house, and I say, Mama, just hang up. It, it's, it's not true. It's not, it's, you know, it's not the real thing. If, you know, if the IRS, they'll send you a letter, or right. if the sheriff's office has something, We'll come knock on your door. Right. You know, yep. we're not going to call you and let you know, right. hey, we're coming, you know. So the, the biggest thing is this IRS yeah. scam. Gentlemen, speaking of the phone lines, here now from George County after a little technical difficulty. Wonderful. Sheriff, are you there? I'm here. How are y'all? Hey, Keith. So glad you can make it in here. Uh, George County Sheriff Keith Havard on the phone with us. Sheriff, we were just talking to uh, Sheriff Izell here about scams that are making their way along the coast and everything. What are some of the things that you've been seeing up in George County? Uh, one thing we've been seeing, and uh, I'd like to say, hey, 
hey to my good friend uh, Sheriff uh, Ezel there. Okay. But uh, we've been seeing a lot of IRS scams. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. People calling and, and uh, claiming to be the FBI and stuff like that, and collecting money. And and also we we actually had some sheriff office scams going on. Yeah. That's some of that's some of them just to to get started. Sheriff, talk about the one that uh, we were we were talking about last week, where the robo calls in and says it has a warrant for your arrest from the mm -hmm. sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. That's that's disconcerting to anybody. Gets that there on their answering machine. Absolutely right. And uh, you know, we just try to tell everybody if you if you get a call from the sheriff's office and, they, and they're asking for credit card information or anything like that. Uh, don't give them any of that stuff. You know, you just want to make sure that uh, you hang up, get their information, call them back, and tell them to send you a certified letter. And Sheriff, it's it's it's. I'm assuming it's really hard for you and Sheriff Fizel to, to make a case against these. I mean, it's not like you can send one of your investigators out to an answer machine. I mean, how how do you try to get it from the law enforcement point of view? Well, we I actually took a call the other day of doing individual is at our counter and. Uh, you could tell the caller from overseas they're not from this country or yes. this state so it's very difficult for our investigators to do anything about it you know unfortunately we all one of the things that we about the only thing we can tell them to do is is contact you there's several ways you can report this at usa.gov and different different websites like that but other than that we tell them to uh contact the credit bureaus make a report if they feel like their identity has been stolen Anything like that. Matt, only about a minute left of the show. I can't believe how fast it's gone. It's been amazing. Should've I just done an one hour. Little interesting mm -hmm. little tidbit. Mm -hmm. uh, what police department had both Sheriff Ezale and Sheriff Havard employed at the same time, Kenny? Man, what a great trivia question. What question? What, <laughs> what, what department is that, Kenny? <laughs> Keith, would you like to answer that question? I do. Uh, Sheriff Ezell was my chief at Ocean Springs <laughs> Police Department. Very good man. Best if we only had man. a bell, I'm sure he's going to add that too. If we only had, yeah. uh, <laughs> Sheriff Ezell, we only got like 15 seconds left in the show. Uh, Y'all have a good working relationship yes, uh, between yeah, yeah. Jackson and yeah. George County. Yes, Talk to do. me just a little yeah, bit about I, that. I tell you what, we have a great working relationship, just especially since Keith and I worked together uh, all those years ago at Ocean Springs, and that's where we started out. Now he's the sheriff up there. We have a good relationship with the local, state, and federal uh, officers. You know, we have men in the FBI squad, the Marshal Service, and we also have the uh, our local task force, and, and we work well. We have a meeting once a month with all the police chiefs, and uh, things are going very well in law enforcement. You know, we're staying on top of things, and but we can't get anything done without good community support, and that's why we really appreciate our community and getting oh, the word out. So, uh, sure. very Keith, proud. Thank you so much for calling in. Thanks, Thanks for, for working in, through Sheriff. that uh, no problem. technical thank problem, brother. Have a good night wherever you are tonight and that wraps up our show we should have done an hour with it thank you so much for everybody who called in and text in tonight next week we're doing construction lawsuits and claims but until then good, good night, night.